Good morning, everyone. Archer Rome Harris here from epithetic.com. In, in today's video, I'm going to talk about the topic, who is the modern day rich man? If one goes to Luke chapter 16, beginning at verses 19 through 31, we read there about a parable. These are not literal people here in this parable. When Jesus speaks in parable, he's not speaking of literal persons. He's using illustrations of persons to represent something or someone. Here we read of two people. One is a rich man and the other one is a beggar by the name of Lazarus. Now, I did a video on this a few weeks back and explained that the rich man represented the Pharisees who were wealthy and they despised the, the poor represented by the beggar Lazarus. Now, I'm not going to regurgitate that here. You can search the channel and you will find that video for the explanation. But the point here is that uh, the rich man, with all of his wealth, felt that that was some type of insulation and that he was in God's favor. But when they both died, circumstances changed. The rich man, who believed that he was in a favored position, found himself in an unfavorable position. The poor man, Lazarus, found himself in a favored position with God. In other words, God favors the poor. And I'm going to show you another scripture to uh, support that. Now, if we jump over to Matthew chapter 19, verses 21 through 24, Jesus was talking to a young man who was very wealthy. And listen to what Jesus said to him. Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven then come follow me verse 22 when the young man heard this he went away sad why because he had great wealth so that young man that wealthy young man was not willing to give up all his wealth and distribute to the poor and then follow jesus then in verse 23, Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. If we go over to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, the Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy. And there the Apostle Paul writes, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. In the letter to James, we read, Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world? to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he has promised those who love him. So we see here also that God's eyes are on the poor. Permit me here to present to you some statistics about Christianity as a religion. Christianity is the world's wealthiest religion. Christians hold more than 55% of the world's wealth. Christianity's worth is over a staggering $107,000 billion. But that was back in 2015. Imagine what it is today. Congregations in the United States alone collect around $74.5 billion each year. $74.5 billion a year. U.S. faith-based institutions account for a combined revenue of more than $378 billion a year. Nearly 77% of tithers give away more than 10% of their earnings to the church. Now, I find that uh, someone off, and I'm going to tell you why. Because Jesus was poor. We go over to Matthew chapter 8 verse 20 we read there and Jesus is speaking here Jesus says foxes have dens and birds have nests but the son of man has no place to lay his head Jesus was poor he didn't have anything 
He wasn't wealthy. And it's also odd because Jesus said in John chapter 18, verse 36, my kingdom is not of this world, but yet Christianity has all of this wealth. So who is blessing Christianity with all of this wealth? If we go over to Matthew chapter 4, beginning at verses 8 and 9, this is, uh, many of you know this as the temptation of Christ. And here, beginning at verse 8, we read that the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And then at verse 9, Satan says to Jesus, All this I will give you, I will give you, if you bow down and worship me. So the devil will give things to persons in exchange for worship. And largely, people are not aware that they are worshiping the devil through things. So it's odd that Jesus was a poor man. His kingdom is no part of this world. Yet that which claims to represent Christ is the wealthiest religion in the world. Who is rewarding and giving this wealth to Christianity? And if one is honest, Christianity is like that... Um, a young man that Jesus talked to and uh, said to that uh, young man, if you want to be perfect, sell everything that you have, give to the poor, then follow me. Christianity hasn't done that. Christianity hoards its wealth. If Christianity, in my view, was truly from above, even those in the poorest lands of the world, those war-torn lands, those persons also profess Christianity, but yet they're dirt poor. So I reason, I conclude, that the modern-day rich man, the composite rich man, is Christianity. So what should be one's course of action if they truly want to follow Christ? Well, do just that. Follow him. Don't follow religious organizations. I also believe that if one takes on this title called Christian, they're marking themselves. That's going to be the identifying mark that... A person is not a follower of Christ. Why? Because Jesus never told anyone to be called Christians. Nowhere. It's not written. People are stubborn. They don't want to accept that. I get it. I understand it. That's how I believed many years ago, too. To take on that title and wear it on yourself, Christian, you are marking yourself. You will be easily identified as one who is not a follower of Christ. You follow Christianity. A religious system stood up by men and that was born out of a world that Jesus said that his kingdom was no part of. Follow Christ. Follow the person. Follow the invisible one. Follow the one who has ascended. He is your head. He is your Lord. He's your owner. Not a religious system. Now, this is R. Jerome Harris. Thank you for listening.